What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode But before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic And that the player ratings and potentials may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season You don't have to follow all the tips This is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those of you out there who may be new to the game and just want some help, or for those of you out there who may be stuck for ideas on what players you could sign for a certain team in career mode. So in today's episode of Who to Sign For, guys, we are going to take a look at the Scottish champion Celtic. Yes, Celtic uh, from Glasgow. I thought it'd be quite a fun team to do a Who to Sign For, and this is more of a more of a tribute or a dedication, if you will, uh, to one of my subscribers, Mark. Mark Rennie, uh, who is a Celtic fan he's been asking for me to do a who to sign for Celtic for a ridiculously long time now so I'm sorry to Mark for taking so long but he's been a subscriber of mine for absolutely ages years and I think it's only right that I, uh, I do one for him and uh, and say thank you and hopefully uh, Mark enjoys this hopefully you guys do as well now Celtic start off with a 10.7 million pound budget which isn't too bad and of course they are the strongest time uh, strongest team in Scotland right now uh, as made evident by this season winning the title uh, doing it undefeated, winning the League Cup, and this weekend as well to take on Aberdeen in the Scottish Cup final as they aim to complete a domestic treble as well. They are the strongest time, uh, strongest team. I keep saying time, strongest team in the Scottish Premier League, no doubt about it. And their side's not bad either. It's a three and a half star team. You can take a look at the team right now as well. It's pretty decent. You'll notice quite a lot of players are out on loan as well. It's a pretty decent blend of youth and experience. But the one thing I would say about doing a Celtic career mode is this. The lack of competitiveness in the Scottish Premier League might put you off staying there for too long. But one thing you could do if you wanted to is swap Celtic into the Premier League or the Championship if you'd prefer uh, in England and, and trying your best down south of the border. Uh, sort of like I've been doing in my club and country save with St. Johnston. What you will find in the first season is that the board expect you to win both the league and the cup and they are both critical objectives in the first season that's hardly a surprise with Celtic being considered uh, the outright strongest team in Scotland but it's also worth noting that there's no secondary cup competition in the game. Unlike in real life, there's the Scottish League Cup and the Scottish Cup as well. In the game, you've only got one cup competition to worry about and the league as well. And also, if you put Celtic in a European competition in the first season and draw with seeded teams, you're only supposed to reach the group stage, which is what they enter automatically in, in the first season. So that objective's met automatically, so it's not even worth talking about. So I don't know why I did. But uh, still, uh, there's a few players that are currently out on loan right now. I'd only recommend recalling one of those. That's uh, Sadie Yanko, uh, a right back once of Manchester United. Um, that's because I'd recommend selling Lustig, uh, their second highest rated right back uh, in the game right now. Uh, and also, I think it's four players that had a contract coming to the end of the year. I wouldn't give deals to any of the players that had their contract coming to the end of the year. Possibly O'Connell, uh, a young centre back. He's got 76 potential, which wouldn't be too bad for Celtic uh, in a few years' time once he peaks, but it's it's not mandatory, and I guess that one's totally up to you. But for Celtic, for new signings, you've got £10.7 million to work with that's not a massive astronomical budget but for Celtic it's not too bad but the one thing I wanted to point out just a moment ago as you would have seen is that Celtic have quite a few players in their team whose salaries I wouldn't consider them bloated or excessive but I don't really feel like they represent true value for money a lot of players are on contracts which are pretty pretty pricey uh, for Celtic's high, uh, for Celtic's uh, wage list and a lot of those players could could you know could, could be doing shifting on really even though they be in the club for quite a, uh, quite a number of years such as Izaguirre uh, such as Lustig, uh, such as Chris Commons, as you'll see in just a moment's time. So I'd recommend selling a few players. The first player I sold was Izaguirre, but the first signing I looked to make was this guy right here, Dennis Zakaria. Now, uh, they've got a young defence midfielder, Abue, um, who's pretty decent with 81 or 82 potential, but I would still say that you could do with improving that CM area anyway as they play a 4-3-3 defend in the game. Uh, now, Zakaria is a 72-rated central midfielder that can also operate a little bit deeper. He's 19 years old, 6 foot three, with some really well rounded physical stats. You can pick him up for around £4.5 million. Zakaria, the Swiss midfielder, he would be a great signing for Celtic. A real sort of driving force through the middle of the park and he's also got 86 potential as well. So Zakaria, the first player I targeted, he'll cost you around £4.5 million. You can see I tried to sell Chris Commons here as well to Aston Villa and uh, eventually he would leave to Villa Park as well. 
But what you'll notice as well is that a lot of the players I do look to sell with Celtic are those players with the contracts that are really, really expensive and, and, and just, just not really worth the wages. And that's one thing which I don't I don't really talk about it as much in these episodes as I should. But some of you guys have noticed it. You know, a lot of you guys wouldn't. But basically, when I try and sign new players and I sell some players as well, you'll notice that the contracts of a lot of the players that I bring in of the young talents are on less wages than the players that they're probably going to be replacing in the first team. Zakari is only going to cost me, I think, it's 15 grand a week or 10, uh, 20 grand a week. Yet yeah, this is a guy that's got a pretty decent starting uh, starting overall, 72, with 86 potential. We're selling Chris Commons, very similar overall, but uh, sorry, it's 10 grand actually, 10 grand for Zakaria. But the wages are far cheaper, and he's of course got much higher potential as well as he's much younger. You've got to make sure that when you are buying new players, you're not just looking at the potentials of the players and the overalls they've got as well, but you think about the wage structure of your club as well. What you'll notice in this Celtic Good Assign Force is so so interesting, or at least interesting to me, is that I totally transition the wage bill here with Celtic. I don't really put any players on excessively high contracts, and I sell quite a few players that are on contracts, which again, I wouldn't consider them uh, consider them bloated or anything, but they're not worth true value for money. When you can sign players with similar overall, with higher potential and much younger, if you can get them on lower wages as well, it's just better value for money. Simple as that. And what you're going to notice is that the wage budget with Celtic in this who to sign for goes really, really high because that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, I'm chopping out. I'm cutting out. I'm getting rid of players who they're just not worth the wages they're on and signing players that have got more potential and much lower wages as well. I'm, I'm a bit of a nerd for this sort of thing, but I love diving into the finances of a club and really transitioning and, and totally completely changing the wage structure as well. But uh, anyway, enough of that boring shit. Um, for new signings with Celtic as well as uh, listing another player there on a high salary goes to Atalanta as well for 1. Point, uh, 1.8 million pounds his valuation for, for most new signings with uh, Celtic we just signed Zakaria uh, Ben Chilwell or Stephen Kingsley uh, two young left backs wouldn't be bad options to replace Izaguirre the Honduras left back yes that's right Honduras left back uh, that I sold right at the start of the episode now Ben Chilwell has 82 potential plays for Leicester City right now very decent young talented left back 69 overall. Stephen Kingsley, uh, a Scottish left back, came through the Falkirk Academy, 22 years old, 70, uh, 70 overall. Um, he's got 81 potential. Either of those two left backs would be really good signings to replace Izaguirre and uh, also try and compete with Kieran Tierney for the first choice left back role. You can pick up Ben Chilwell for around 1.75 to 2 million pounds. I got him for one and a three quarter million pounds. Um, pound bid and again he only cost me 15 grand a week which is uh, lower much lower than Izaguirre and despite him being one overall lower than the Honduras left back he's of course got much more potential as well so either Kingsley or Chilwell would be fantastic choices for the left back role in the end I went in, uh, went in for Ben Chilwell decided to go for him and not Kingsley as well as uh, Lustig went to Atalanta for 1.8 million pounds and for 1.75 million pounds that's that's just a bargain right there because even though you're spending more money on what you've Got for the Honduras left back is Aguirre, even though he's one rating lower. Again, it's it's cheaper wages and he's got much more potential as well. So Chilwell, the second signing I made alongside Zakaria, I think he'd be a brilliant signing. Him or Kingsley would be fantastic for a young British left back to rival Kieran Tierney, a young Scottish left back at uh, Celtic right now. Both of them really, really young, talented left backs, and again, both of them having really similar potential. Chilwell 82, Kingsley 81. I went for Chilwell, and I think that was probably the right signing to make because I also recalled Yanko after selling Lustig uh, like I discussed a moment ago and only cost £187,000 as well which is basically nothing but uh, for more signings with Celtic I'd also recommend another new midfielder now you might be wondering why this is with the young talented midfielder they've got right now in a uh, with Scott Brown Celtic through and through as well you know why buy another central midfielder for Celtic well I just think it's the right thing to do because Scott Brown's not going to be around forever uh, they've got some players like Rogic and uh, Armstrong as well but their potentials aren't exactly too high and again, what you're noticing is with that wage budget continuing to rise, it gives us the option to put more of that back into the transfer budget and give us more money to work with uh, as we go in search of new signings. I'd recommend picking up this guy uh, from Toulouse, who I also signed in a Newcastle who to sign for. I never used him in the game, but he's got some very, very nice, well-rounded stats. Just 19 years old. Alexis Blin, uh, the Toulouse defensive midfielder, who will cost you a little bit over his valuation, but at 19 years old, he's already valued at £4.8 million. 
rounds, uh, 75 overall, and he's got 86 potential, just like Zakaria as well. Him and Zakaria being part of being two of the uh, three central midfielders you would use in the Celtic side would be absolutely fantastic. Zakaria is physically strong at six foot three, uh, a very very talented young midfielder, and Blin as well with uh, 86 potential, just like Zakaria. These two would be a really really great CM slash CDM partnership, and I think they will both be really really good signings. Again, you probably have to put Blin on a little bit higher than 10 grand a week. I think I gave him, was it 20 grand a week uh, to, to sign you? Yeah, 20 grand a week. Uh, so 10 grand a week more than uh, Zakaria. But again, they've both got 86 potential. Blin is already 75 rated. So it will be the best CM you've got in your team right now or CDM if you want. And uh, they, they would both be fantastic signings for Celtic. So I picked him up for 7.5 million pounds. It's quite a bit of money. And when you start off with 10.7 million pounds, that would assume that you're spending most of your budget on Blin. But again, because of the wage budget, because of the way I'm structuring the Celtic side, selling on some, again, I wouldn't call them deadwood players, but players on really high contracts and then signing players on lower contracts, it enables me to free up more funds to buy a new player. So after signing Blin, after signing Zakaria, after signing Chilwell, I've spent quite a lot of money, already over £10 million on those three players, already over the budget, but we still got quite a lot of money left over after the season tickets came in as well. And because, you know, because of the, uh, the wage budget alteration, that's that's pretty much the entire reason I was doing this. So uh, yeah, uh, the fourth signing I went in for was Henry on Yakuru, uh, another young talent here, a Nigerian winger, 19 years old, uh, just like Blin, just like Zakaria, 75 overall, valued at 5.5 million pounds. You'd have to spend a little bit over the valuation to get hold of the guy. I got in for 7.5 million pounds, but this guy's 75 overall with 87 potential, and he is absolutely rapid. This guy's got some amazing stats already, so quick, just 19 years old. Technically, not bad either as well for just a 19-year-old, and he's got 87 potential. When this guy peaks, he will be an absolute machine down the right or the left side. His stats indicate to me, he'd probably be better suited on the left-hand side, but if you're going to keep Scott Sinclair on the left wing, I'd use this guy as a right winger. He's got a four-star weak foot. He's got some absolutely fantastic stats. He won't cost you that much on the wages, around 15 grand a week as well, lower than a lot of the players here at Celtic. And again, it, it's all about bringing in those younger players for the future with high potential on lower salaries than their predecessors. So on Yakuri was the fourth signing I made out of five, 7.5 million pounds, 15 grand a week on a five year deal. Very, very good signings. And again, look at these stats. I've, I've yet to try him in uh, career mode this year, but he looks fantastic. Absolutely rapid. 87 agility as well. 82 dribbling already. 72 long shots. 77 finishing. He looks like the perfect inside forward. High, high work rates as well. And again, I think he would better be better playing on the left side, but if you keep Scott Sinclair out there, he wouldn't be too bad on the right side either with a four-star weak foot. And the fifth and final signing I made was this guy right here. Uh, Lautaro Martinez of Racing Club. A young, nine 19 year old striker, 70 overall. I bought him for, I think it was 2.75 million pounds. And once again, another player on really, really low wages, but with super high potential. Just like on Yakuru, he has 87 potential and he will be an absolutely fantastic signing to make for the future. Even though you've got Dembele, of course, Musa Dembele making such a big name for himself. He's uh, obviously a really young, talented striker since arriving from the cottage at Fulham. He is certainly going to be worth a a lot of money in the future but this guy is an ideal player to play alongside him if you switch to a two strike formation a lot not a lot of people uh, like playing one strike formations and sometimes they feel like a little bit isolated but if you switch to a two strike formation this guy and Dembele up top together would be absolutely fantastic the Argentine striker and the French striker working together or this guy coming off the bench for Dembele either or it's your choice he would be a great signer regardless though and for 2.75 million pounds it's a little bit over his valuation to begin with just like all the signings I made in this episode but you got to think about the bigger picture. When this guy peaks, he'll be 87 overall and an absolute monster and worth a lot more than 2.75 million pounds. That's for sure. But uh, regardless, well round physical stats as always. Uh, 72 finishing as well. Target forward uh, speciality, 5 foot 9 despite being a target forward. But uh, certainly worth the signature, even with Dembele at the club. So in the end, I spent 24 million pounds on five new players, raised 3.6 million pounds as well. Uh, of course, got a little bit more extra money in my kitty as well uh, for the season 
tickets, which I forgot to record, so sorry about that. But uh, again, you know, to, to, to recap once again for like the 75th time now, the reason why I was able to acquire so much more money is because when you look at the players that I sold, lots of these players were on high contracts and the players I brought in were on low contracts. So I simply put the uh, the wage budget, the extra wage money I got back in the transfer budget and that's what my ideal strategy with Celtic would be. Ship on some of the, again, I don't want to say dead because they're not really deadwood players, but ship on, so, let's just say it, ship on some of the deadwood, uh, get rid of some of the players on high contracts, high wages, and bring in players on uh, lower wages, who of course are younger with higher potential for the future. That's my ideal strategy for a Celtic career mode. So as always, we would simulate to the end of the season, see how the players would get on, see how the team would get on. And in the end, as you would see, not really a surprise, they ended up winning the Scottish Premier League really, really comfortably. Uh, of course, in uh, Scotland, they have a first stage and then a secondary stage where they split the league table into the top six and the bottom six, and they go into sort of like too many leagues. Uh, Celtic uh, won, the, uh, won the championship uh, pretty comfortably, finishing, what was it, 28 points clear of Aberdeen in the end, only losing two games all season long. Extremely impressive, but it was to be expected. They also won the Scottish Cup, uh, beating Rangers in the Battle of the Old Firm uh, by two goals to one. So a domestic double, just like they were asked to do, which is their critical objective uh, domestically. And the Champions League was a real surprise as well. They were only supposed to reach the group stage, which again, they enter automatically in the first season if you draw with seeded teams. But they actually reached the quarterfinal stages beating Barcelona in the round of 16, 4-3 over two legs. Now, of course, Celtic have beaten Barcelona in, in recent years. They, uh, they beat them a, a few years ago, famously. Uh, Tony Watt scored in a 2-0 victory uh, against Barcelona at Parkhead. They, they've beaten Barcelona in recent years, but to beat them over two legs, 4-3, in the round of 16 in the Champions League, I was really surprised about that, and I must say, I thought that was really, really awesome. Uh, they, beat, uh, they got beat by City in the quarterfinals, but uh, either way, uh, reaching the quarterfinals in the Champions League, winning the domestic double, that was uh, meeting and exceeding the objectives we had at the start of the season. So I would call this a very successful who to sign for. Probably one of my most successful who to sign fors of this series. I thought I did a really good job with this one. So uh, yeah, I was, I was quite impressed with how well I did in this one. So um, yeah, those are the signings I'll make regardless. Five players there. Martinez, Onyekuru, Blin, Zakaria and Shilwell. Five new players coming in. Quite expensive. But again, it's expensive in transfer fees, but not in wages. All of these guys under 20 grand a week on their contracts. Very very talented young players. Martinez and Onyekuru, 87 potential each. Blin Zakaria, 86 potential each. Chilwell, 82 potential to rival Kieran Tierney. Five really awesome signings, all worthwhile. And I would definitely say a Celtic career mode would be a really fun one to do. If you keep them in Scotland, you've got the rivalry with uh, Rangers. Or if you want, you can put them both in England. Try your luck south of the border like so many do in the game. It's a really, really fun challenge. And uh, I would certainly recommend Celtic for a career mode regardless. I'd say it'll be a very, very fun fun one at Glasgow. But that will end today's episode of who to sign for, guys. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If the tips did help, then please do consider leaving a like as well. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic evening. Mark, hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for being a subscriber for so many years. Have a fantastic night, everyone, and I will see you for the next episode of who to sign for very soon. Bye.